Hey guys, Erpel Eepel here with a video on how to do parallel compression properly. I've noticed a lot of videos online that try and show this, but they always seem to do it, in my opinion, in a very poor way. So here I have a basic drum beat I built with just some stock 808 samples. Nothing too fancy. So if we come in here, what a lot of people might tell you to do is open up the I.O., you know, open up the return section, drop a compressor in and uh, open up your sends and then you can send your various drum sounds to it in varying amounts. What I'm going to tell you is that that is not a good method of parallel compression. The problem with this, like let's say you send this amount of the kick and then this amount of the snare, the idea that a lot of people say in these videos is that that controls how much parallel compression you're given to each instrument. Number one, you're going to change your mix balance by doing this um, because you're going to be blending in different amounts back of this signal and this signal. So you're going to be changing your mix balance, number one. Number two is that inherent Apparently that's not how a compressor works. A compressor works by taking an input signal. When that signal goes over the threshold, it works on the signal. And when the signal is not over that threshold, it doesn't work on the signal. So by changing the amount that you're sending, you are changing the very nature of how it's compressing, which is definitely not the same thing as changing the amount you want. So the way you really want to do this, let's just work with one instrument, this 808, and we'll send it in at full volume. What we're doing when we do this, when we send it zero dB, is we're sending an identical copy of the signal uh, with no gain cuts, just as is to the compressor. So it gets a full copy of that signal, okay? And now it can act on that full copy. If we wanna turn down the amount of parallel compression, then we would do that by turning down the output gain of our compressor. Now, a few things to note when doing parallel compression. Number one, is do not have makeup gain on, turn that off. Number two, set an infinite ratio. Okay, and now we get into the attack and release settings, and this is actually really important. Most videos I see, they just throw a compressor on and they set it up the way they normally would, which is wrong. So if I set this up the way I normally would for a kick drum, you know, if I was gonna do a kick drum in serial, I'd probably set maybe an attack between 30 and 50 milliseconds. Um, I'd set probably a medium-ish release around here, and I'd call that a day. I'd want to give that transient a bit of breathing room, and I'd want to have a medium-ish kind of somewhat snappy release. For me personally, that's what I like. But this would not be good for parallel compression because what's going to happen is effectively this is mostly going to squash the body of what is now a copy of our kick drum signal. What we have left as an output is mostly the transient, which when blended back in actually acts as an expander. It expands the dynamic range between the kick drums, transient pop, and its sustained body. Now, if we truly want to compress it, we want to jack up its sustained body. We want to make that really big and boomy and reduce the difference in volume between the pop and the boom. So to do that, we want an instantaneous attack and a relatively fast release. So what happens then is it only acts if we set the threshold right. If we set the threshold too low, it's acting now all the time on the transient and the body, regardless of our attack and release settings, because it's just so low. If we set it at the right level, then you can see it's only going to snap out that transient pop and it's not going to affect the body. What that means is that we have now a copy of the body coming out of the end of the compressor without the transient being blended back in. And as a result, we have reduced the dynamic range by pumping up the body of the kick drum. And now what we would do once we get it to where we like it is we could bring this down to negative infinity and blend it up until we like how it sounds. Now, if we wanted to do it to the entire mix of drums, we could set up a send or a return track with a compressor on it. And this is set up to roughly the same settings. And in this case, we would send the entire drum mix, but I'm not going to send only, you know, this much. I'm going to send the full amount, the full copy of the signal, zero dB. That's gonna come into here and I'm gonna control my output level. So. So maybe that's where I like it, where it's just getting all those transients and keeping the bodies. And then I'm going to use this here 
this sli uh, send slider or return slider and I'm gonna start from zero and crank it up until I like it. So for me, it's about there and you can play around with this, but the key takeaways are that one, you're gonna do peak compression, that's important. You're just trying to squash that transient peak. You're gonna turn makeup gain off. You're gonna set ratio to infinity. You're gonna have an instantaneous attack and a fast release, and you'll set the threshold until you see that it's squashing your peaks without touching the sustained portion of the signal. And then you'll blend in how much you want with the output gain of the return. Uh, for a return track, that would be here. And then if it is within the IO section of the drum rack, then that is going to be this volume level right here. All right, hope that helps guys. Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.